start with was with was number one. Yes, my brother. Unmute yourself, brother. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we are done. Uh, it's recording now. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, begin, begin with verse number one. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. After he sat down, his disciples came to him. Yes, God. Then... Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. So we see that wherever Jesus went, he went about preaching, teaching, and healing people. But he always went around preaching and teaching. Now, what is the preaching? Preaching is to convert people. What is teaching? Teaching is to make people disciples. And this Bible study is a teaching. This is not a preaching. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is not to convert you, but this is to make disciples. So disciples are those who are learning the secrets deep, which are hidden from the world, but the Spirit of God reveals it where anyone can learn, practice, and become more and more like the Master. So Jesus went about teaching. And the first thing he said, blessed. Now, in the Old Testament, the last book is the book of Malachi. It ends with a curse. Because of your disobedience, I will bring curse on you. But now the New Testament opens up with the word blessing. Now what is blessing? What is the word blessing? Jos, you and I will be only talking. Come on, talk to me, brother. Yeah. Blessing is uh, you know, the grace uh, that God has given to us, the gifts that God has given to us. Okay. The word blessing means it comes right in the book of Genesis. God blessed Adam and Eve and then said, be fruitful, increase, uh, replenish, subdue. Brother Baba, we have got less time. So we are not going there, Genesis. I'll just give the outline, okay? You can check it out, okay? Blessed means empowerment to bring forth God kind of result in your life. So God blessed Adam and Eve and then he said be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue and have dominion over all creation. So because of the empowerment of blessing, we are able to be fruitful, we are able to increase, we are able to replenish we are able to subdue and we are able to have dominion over all creation. Now, the Lord is giving us a very powerful secret over here. He's saying, blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, which one do you want to be? Poor in spirit or rich in spirit? Rich, rich in spirit. Now, what's the difference between poor in spirit and rich in spirit? A person who is rich in spirit is full of pride. He's so rich that he's saying, I don't need you, God. Mm. He's full of ego. He says, I don't need God. I can live my life the way I want. I have nothing to do with God. But a person who is poor in spirit, like, for example, Paul, he had tremendous revelation from God. Tremendous gifts from God. Tremendous charism. Tremendous preaching ministry. He had everything. But he was poor. Means what? Even though he has got everything from God, his attitude is that like of a beggar, like a person who is in extreme poverty, that is saying, 
Lord, I'm not yet satisfied. I want more and more of you. Praise God. When Praise that God. becomes the attitude of a person, then the person experiences the glory of God and the presence of God. So when Jesus spoke these words, blessed, the first thing he is saying, he came into this world to bless. So this sermon is about blessing, where Jesus is talking about empowerment, by which he said to Abraham, Abraham, I bless you, so that you, through you, nations will be blessed. So I bless you so that you now can be a blessing to the families all around the world. And in the same way, we who are Christians are blessed, not for ourselves, but we are blessed to be a blessing across the world. Praise God. So Praise blessing God. will give you an empowerment by which you are no longer going to be operating in the natural. You are going to be operating by the ability of God supernaturally and you will see supernatural things happening in your life and through your life in the lives of others. So when Jesus spoke these things, he spoke each of the blessings, but there were two things that he was talking about in every blessing. Praise God. The Praise first God. thing is every blessing that he spoke, he wanted to show that you can be happy you can be happy only when your character is right. Hello? Yeah, for example, brother, how do you, how do you define that? Now, now, for example, a person is in pride. Hmm. Is his character right or no. extremely wrong? This is wrong. It is extremely wrong. So when a person's character is wrong and he wants to experience happiness, he cannot experience, uh, experience happiness unless his character is right. Now, how does a person get to a character? There is a process. Every time I take a word of God, that word which is alive, that word is Jesus, that word gives me godly thoughts. Mm. So when I have godly thoughts, it leads me to godly feelings. From godly feelings, I get godly decisions to take. Right. From godly decisions, I get godly actions. When right. these actions are repeated over and over again, it becomes a godly habit. And godly habit leads me to godly character. Right. If the character is wrong, it's not because that person's action is wrong. That person's thinking is wrong. Okay. So when a person is trying to change his behavior or his action without changing his thinking, he will be a big failure. And that's why the word of God has the power to heal you physically. Mm. It has got the power to heal your brain. Mm. But very important, God's word is the only medicine that has the power to even heal a person's mind. Nothing in this world has been discovered that you can heal somebody's mind because mind is spiritual and the spiritual mind has control over the natural brain which controls the body. Right. So if the knowledge is right, then the right knowledge will give the brain to do the right things. Right. If the right. knowledge is wrong, then the wrong knowledge will tell the same brain to do the wrong things and the body is neither good or bad. It only takes order from the mind. Amen. So when Jesus is sharing these truths, he's saying, you are living in the corrupted world. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. But how are you going to experience that in your real life? Because you are surrounded by the world, which is full of corruption. So he's giving us an answer and saying that when you follow these system this this uh these truths yeah you will not only be happy but you will go around making this world a happy place to live in and Amen. that's why the first key 
to happiness, he says, you must be poor in spirit. So what should be your attitude? Now, that's what Jesus, when, when, when Paul, who was a Pharisee, he had an extreme zeal for God. Hmm. But he was deceived. Hmm. Because what he thought, he being a Jew, that Jesus and the followers of Jesus were taking the Jews out of their Jewish uh, faith and getting them into some wrong faith. And that's why he went after the church, he went after the Christians, killing them and imprisoning them. But on his way to Damascus, when he encountered Jesus on the way, he asked Jesus two questions. First, who are you, Lord? And when Jesus said, I'm Jesus of Nazareth, why do you persecute me? The very next question of, G of Paul was, what do you want me to do for you? Amen. And these two questions of Paul remained till his last breath. So even though he had such great revelation coming from the written scriptures by the Holy Spirit, now Paul had never seen Jesus in flesh and blood, but he came to know Jesus in the spirit because of his attitude being poor in spirit. A person who is poor in spirit can never get satisfied. He is still below the poverty line in his spiritual line because he's saying, I want more and more of you, Jesus, because I'm not yet satisfied. That is the attitude of a person poor in spirit. No matter how much revelations he has, no matter how much truth he has, no matter how much, but his attitude is so poor in spirit that every moment he longs to be in that relationship with God. And when that person has got that kind of an attitude, the character is that he will experience the kingdom of heaven. Now, how does he do that? How does he do that? One, every time you read in the Bible, there are two things. One, God gives you his promise. Now, remember, those promises that he gives you are not based on my merits, but based on the merits of Jesus who took my place on the cross. Mm. So every promise is a yes in Christ Jesus because of what he performed on the cross, not because of my good works. No. I have, we all have got disqualified because under the law, when a person has sinned, he is supposed to be under curse. But because of Jesus taking our place on the cross, we are qualified through Christ. And that's why we receive mercy and grace. And that is why every one of God's promises are yes in Christ. Without Christ, no promises are yes to you. Is that clear? So every time you want to build up anything in, the, in your life, in the kingdom of God, the first thing is you must check in the Bible, in Christ, what is God giving me the promises? For example, today's uh, reading of Ephesians during the Mass. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, when I look into the natural, I can't see spiritual blessings. But when I look into the spirit, the word of God says, I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Now I have the promise. Now it's not enough that I have the promise. That promise has to be backed up by my faith in action. Yeah. So grace is all that God has accomplished for me on the cross through Jesus. Faith is, I agree to what God has performed me for me on the cross. Not based on my merits, but based on Christ's merits. So wherever grace and my faith cooperate together, that's when the blessings of God begins to manifest in my life. So if I don't know the promise of God, I don't have the grace of God. The grace of God is available. But I will not know how I can use the grace of God. Praise God. Praise God. And that's why Paul says, you know, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And this grace, I think it is 1510, 1 Corinthians 1510. Just put that, Baba. Let's settle it once and for all so that we understand how we can use the promises of God 
in our day-to-day -day life and have victory. 1 Corinthians 15, 10? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But, Read that for us. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me has not been in vain. On, the, con on the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. So Paul is very, very clear. Mm. He is saying that today whatever I am is because of God's grace. Now what is God's grace? How, how, what, how do you define God's grace? Go to 2 Peter 1 verse 2 quickly. And then we'll come here again. 2 Peter 1 verse 2. May grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So when will grace and peace get multiplied? Can grow in abundance when I get the knowledge of God. See, many a times people say, uh, you know, the devil is troubling me. The devil is destroying me. The, all about the devil. But God never says, that put that Hosea 4 6 and then we'll come back. The Bible says in Hosea 4 6 that God's people are perishing or being destroyed, not by the devil, but because, yeah, read that. My people My, are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So if there is any issues going on in your life, and your life is a failure. It's only because of lack of knowledge. If you get the right knowledge in that situation where you are, you can turn that situation into victory. Amen. Amen. That is why this Bible study is about getting the knowledge practical and then using that knowledge and seeing the result. Today, before we close the class, we will have some demonstration of one or two healings right before your eyes. So you'll understand how I use grace, I use your faith, putting together, and the manifestation is healing. So my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why? Because you have rejected knowledge. Whose knowledge? God's knowledge. I now, if I, if I have to ask you in the 24 hours that we have, which knowledge are we hearing throughout the day? The knowledge that is bombarded through the television, through the news channel, through WhatsApp and all that which is of the world or the knowledge that comes from the Bible. Worldly knowledge, yeah. So if there is worldly knowledge, the worldly knowledge will not give you the truth. It will give you the lie and that lie will produce wrong character. Right. Because the performance will become wrong because you don't have the promise of God. You have the threats of the devil. Right. So he says, I reject you. God is saying, I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. It's very dangerous. Now, this was in the old covenant. Now, we, we just read in the new covenant, 2 Peter 1, 2. Go back, Rabbi. Back, back. Yeah. Yeah, read may, may grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So faith comes by a person preaching, teaching. When the person hears the truths and he understands how to apply them, you begin to grow in Bible faith, not mental faith. Mental faith is based on senses. Like Thomas said, unless I see him, unless I touch him, I will not believe. And Jesus said, listen, Thomas, you are not on Bible faith. You are not on my word faith. You are on your sense knowledge faith. And you are saying, unless I touch him, I will not believe. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but yet they hear my word and they believe my word. These are the ones who are blessed. 
these are the ones who experience the ability of God. Now, when you read the word grace, it means God is saying to you, through the truths that you are listening, through the promises that you are listening, not by your own merits, but through my son, I am willing to use my power, my ability, my blessings, my everything for you on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. So right. before I can get in a solution to any problem, I must tap into grace. And grace is all that Jesus has accomplished for you on the cross. And that is what Paul discovered. He was a Pharisee. He knew the scriptures amazing in the Old Testament. But now when he was introduced to Jesus, it opened his spiritual eyes. And now you can see that Jesus is the prophet, is prophesied all over the Old Testament, the Messiah who is going to come. And now, by getting into that passionate hunger to know the truth, Paul is spending time and time and time, and God is giving him the revelation of understanding. And that is what Paul has written the letters. And he's saying, today, if whatever I am, I'm by the grace of God. Because by my own senses, I'm a murderer. For the wrong that I've done, I should be in guilt. But God, who oh, forgive me, does not remember my past. And therefore, I choose not to remember my past. Amen. If anybody wants to be successful in life, remember what you learned from Paul. Philippians 3.13 Without using this tool, no human being can become successful in life. Philippians 3.13. Read this, brother. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. He says, I do not consider I'm perfect. It's not that I've reached perfection. I still have flaws. But this one thing I've learned to do, forgetting. Forgetting is a powerful weapon that you deliberately, purposely begin to use in your life by which you forgive yourself and you forgive others. God does not keep your past. He says, I do not remember any of your sin. He has no records of your past. They are all nailed on the cross. If God doesn't remember it, you also don't remember it. Praise God. And God is saying, I do not remember your past, but I have a future. And Paul is saying, when I learned this beautiful lesson of not keeping record of the past, who did what, who said what, this happened and that happened, all those memories, I shift deleted on purpose. And only when you do that, now you are focused to look into the future. What happens is in our life, in the present situation, whatever you are, wherever you are, Satan reminds you of the, of the past. It reminds you of the issues that you're going through in the present. Because as long as you can keep that in your mind, who rejected you, who tortured you, who uh, was against you. And if you can get you there, you will never be able to go into the future. And that's Brother, what Paul says. Brother, can, uh, you, can you tell in uh, quickly two minutes, how can we apply this in our, uh, in our practical life? See, forgetting okay. is a very difficult okay, thing, okay. you know. Many times we keep remembering. So how can we okay. just quickly overcome this? Okay. Everything is a seed. When I open my mouth and I speak is a seed. God's word is a seed. Okay. So when God says to forgive, you can never forgive with your human strength. Everything in the kingdom of God works by faith. Forgiveness right. is by faith. So I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, this person has done all these things to me. Just as you said, Jesus on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. I use the same word, Lord. First of all, forgive me for there are many things that I've done which I need forgiveness. Forgive me, Lord, 
that I did not know what I was doing. And with the forgiveness that I've received now, I choose to forgive everybody unconditionally. Not with my feeling, not with my emotions, but by faith, because that's what your word says. So in the name of Jesus, I choose to forgive everybody unconditionally in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, did I plant the seed, Brother Jose? Yes, you did. Now, will the seed produce its own kind? Yes, it does. So this seed will produce forgiveness in action in your life. That's right. how it works. Hmm. Actually speaking, what God made to operate by faith is effortless. Mm. But when you do it with your own performance, you end up with frustration because you are based on feeling. Mm. Faith is not feeling. Faith is believing. Mm. So you do it a couple of times or, or you just no. say it once? No, no, no. For example, A and B are, are troubling me every day. Mm. Every day. Yeah. Because I cannot avoid them. Right. They might be in the family. Yeah. So I'm going to face them every day. Right. So I can use the the, the seed of faith yeah. by thanking God every day. Lord, thank you for your grace of forgiveness that you have given me. With the grace of forgiveness, like the parable of a servant who was forgiven 10,000 talents yeah. and he had to only forgive 100 shillings. I don't want to be like that servant who ended up in gnashing of teeth. Yeah. Lord, I choose out of the 10,000 you have given me, I choose to give that 100 shillings cheerfully, unconditionally, in total favor, O oh Lord, and I bless this person. Mm, amen. Yeah. Now, did you get the knowledge? Yes. Yes. Did you get the promise? Yes. yes. Now, are you ready to perform on that? Yes. yes. That's when your character begins to get stronger. Amen. That is called as poor in spirit. Right. So, complete called, dependence on uh, God. Yes. So the first thing is, the first thing is, you can be happy yeah. when you understand that happiness is based on character. Yeah. To get that character, God has given you the promise. Right. That promise gives you the grace. Right. And your response of faith is your response. Right. In agreement. Right. Now, where both of them go together, the result is character. Hmm. So, so when Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, okay, for yours is the kingdom of heaven, what people will say, blessed are those who are rich in spirit, hmm. who are smart, who have got pleasure, who have got money, who have got this and who have got that, and there is nothing lacking, they shall be happy. And the Lord said, no, that will end up becoming a carnal mindset. Right. So Jesus is giving us the mistakes of a blind carnal world which has been teaching us and giving us the knowledge so very opposite and we end up taking that knowledge and we begin to wonder how come my harvest is coming very different from what I'm praying for. Right. So when the person understands the truth that he got to be poor in spirit. So poor in spirit is the person who is saying, no matter what happens, Lord, I'm stuck with you and I take your word as the highest authority and I want only to do what you tell me to do. Mm. Praise God. Praise God. I'm, not getting, I'm not getting involved in any of the teachings of this world. Praise God. Praise so God. wherever Jesus went, he preached one message, repent. For the mm. kingdom of heaven is close at hand. The moment he said repent. Repent is not change of action. Right. Repent is not change of behavior. Repent is simply change of thinking. So Jesus spent teaching and preaching to make people aware that what your knowledge is and what the kingdom knowledge is exactly opposite. Nobody is going to force you. But when you understand the truth, it is up to you. Are you willing to make the correction? So who is the person poor in spirit? The person who is poor in spirit is the person who is quick to look into the word as a mirror and make a quick correction. Right. Without the correction, you cannot be poor in spirit. Now look at Paul. Okay, 
He had everything. He had name, he had fame, he had power, he had authority, he had position, he had everything. But when he encountered Jesus, he realized what he was following and what Jesus was saying was entirely different. Mm. So he being the Pharisee of the Pharisees, he decided to make the correction. Amen. He refused to be called a Pharisee for which he spent years to study and now he is ready to be a bonded slave of Jesus whom he has never seen in his life. Amen. So now he's saying, I will go with Jesus' teaching. And he says, the knowledge that I've re received is nothing but dung compared to the relationship with Christ. That's called poor in spirit. A person who is poor in spirit, nothing in this world comes between he and God. He gives the Lord the highest place in his life. That's the person who is poor in spirit. Is ready to face anything, even death, even insult, even abuse, persecution, in opposition. You name it, everything. But is not willing to let go of his relationship with Christ. That's the person who is poor in spirit. And such a person attitude will bring in a character which is going to blow off every work of Satan. So what did Jesus come to give us? The first thing he came to give you the truth. So the beginning of Jesus, now when we go for mass, we finish the mass and then the priest gives you the last blessing. Is that right? Right, right. But when it comes to Jesus, his sermon starts with first the blessing. Hmm. It is a Christian practice, you know, to end up with a blessing. Right. But when you see Jesus, he starts his sermon with blessing. He says, Christian practice must be practiced at the highest level for you to experience the highest kind of joy, the highest kind of happiness, and that will take you on a journey of a passion that you cannot, that, 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 that surpasses all understanding. Everything. Amen. It's a it's a passion. It's an addiction. Praise God. Praise God. And that's where you just said. Sometimes I'm on a trip of preaching for eighteen hours or twenty hours. Sometimes twenty two hours, nonstop, going from this class to that class. Why is it like that? Because I found the greatest treasure of my life. And when I found this treasure, I was ready to give up my business. I was ready to give up everything as the Bible says. And when I gave up all those things, my children were in school. Now when I look back, the kind of life that I've experienced is so amazing that God is so true. Seek you first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Put that Matthew 6, 30. From 6, 30. Do you know, Jos? Yeah. According to the timing, I've got only two minutes and I've not even started. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's, I mean, she, sister has given me 30 minutes extra. You heard it. Yeah. There is not there now in the screen. But if God, uh, 30, 6, 30, right? Yeah, 30, 30. God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow, is thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe, clothe you, you of little faith? Baba, Baba, you just check on the mic whose dog is barking. No, 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 it's my, my dog. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry, my neighbor's, neighbor's dog. Okay, okay, Sorry. okay. Sorry about it. Okay, okay. Then, then, then. Therefore, do not worry saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? Mm. For it is then, the Gentiles who strive on, Jude, for... Jude, 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 make it up, brother. Yeah, for it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly father knows 
that you need all these things. Pause, pause. But, yeah. No, 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 pause, pause, pause. Just give me 31 and 32, Baba. Pause, pause, pause. Now, how many Christians do you find who practice was 31? Most of us are worried. So, when a person is practicing verse number 31, Jesus is saying, these people are like the pagans. Pagans worship their God in that condition because it is their, because they don't believe their God is the provider. Their, their, their creator is the provider. But that's not about the Christians. The Christians, my father who is a creator, he doesn't want you to do all those things, 31 and 32. That is why he says, look, for it is the Gentiles, it is the pagans who strive for all these things. What will I eat? What will I drink? What will I wear? Where will I stay? All those things. And indeed, your heavenly father knows all that you need all these things. But, look at the 33. But. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. So first strive, first, first, strive first for a good education, good job, good money, and all those things. Then when you're old, come and, and seek the kingdom of God and you will find happiness in your life. Huh? No, that is not right. What is, God, what is Jesus saying? Strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. and all. So, so now, now tell me, are we poor in spirit or are we rich in spirit? Currently, we are rich in spirit. What about the poor in spirit? The poor in spirit is not worried about his tomorrow. Correct. Because he believes, because he believes that his every need is taken care by the heavenly father who can feed the birds in the air. Have you ever seen any bird dying of hunger? Mm, no. No. But that same bird in a cage, have you seen it die of hunger? Yes. Yes. But the same bird outside in the open, have you seen dying of hunger? No. no. The father takes care of every bird. If the father can take care of the birds and the animals and all of them and feeds them, how much more he who created you has his own children in his likeness and image will take care of every need of yours. But the question is, am I seeking, searching, striving first the kingdom of God? And until I do that, I am not poor in spirit. I'm still rich in spirit. Mm. Is it now clear? Yes. So being uh, to become poor in spirit, uh, as we read in Peter, 2 Peter 1, 3, to you know, grow in the knowledge of God. More you come, become you know, aware of God's uh, law, God's principles and the system it works your dependency on god increases okay and that will i'll give you an example baba jose hmm. okay i'll give a practical example yeah okay there are two people yeah both are, both are sick hmm. okay one is praying hard and fasting asking god to heal that person yeah heal himself yeah okay Second one is doing, but then somebody comes and says that you are not under the law, you are under grace. Right. So the person doesn't understand. He says, I don't understand what you're saying. Then the person says, okay, what are you praying? So that person says, I'm praying to God. I've been fasting and praying. I've been kneeling down and saying, God, please have mercy on me and mm. please heal me. And I've been doing it day and night, brother. Mm. Okay. Now the person says, will you do what I tell you? And the next moment you'll see the grace of God heal you. Mm. So the person says, okay, tell me. So he takes that person to a scripture because grace is always backed up with scripture, right? Right. See, see grace is given only to students who have failed. <laughs> yeah. Grace is never given to the child who, who wants one more, one mark to score the highest in the class. No, 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 no. Right. But a student who has failed by 10 marks, the nuns will give that student 10 marks and pass that student because they are compassionate. Right. You ask the nuns, don't they give grace mark to the children? Yes, yes. No, you yes. ask no? You and I have passed like that, though, brother. 
<laughs> we pass by the grace mark so we understand it very well <laughs> and also so, sisters because yeah you ask the same sister will you give uh, two marks extra for a child who is coming sister give me two mark only one mark sister i can come to the highest will they give never yeah, they distinction will. sister only half a mark sister please have no way but yeah. a student who has failed and is saying sister 10 mark okay next step study huh? see be a good boy yes okay come on pass that is what grace is all about we yeah. have all failed we don't deserve but right. god has passed us now this person is teaching that person see if you are doing it with your self effort you will fail because through jesus came what grace okay. and truth let me explain to you that so that yeah. it will become very very clear go to gospel of john 1 and then we'll go there 1 john i think the last last was the uh, 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 gospel of john 1 huh? gospel of no 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 sorry sorry gospel of john 1 yeah. yeah yeah correct go go down go down go down okay oh, no no the, somewhere it is there i don't remember the verse number it says through jesus came grace and truth just check for 15 15 was thank you jesus what on yeah yeah 17 see the law indeed was given through moses grace and truth came through jesus christ grace and truth came through jesus christ so under the law if you disobey you get curse right but now we are all under curse but look right. at through jesus what did we receive we receive what grace 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 and truth yeah Nine minutes more. Come on, quickly. Grace Jude, go. And Lord, we are under no grace. We are under law. Nine minutes more. Ah, uh, one Peter two twenty four. Okay, now now, A is working hard to get his healing. B is being taught. how to tap into grace now that is what we are going to do after i explain we will have some healing and you'll see instantly the healing takes place okay watch this he jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross right his pastance yeah i can't see it with my eyes but right. i choose to believe because it's the written in the bible okay so that we are free from sin why because our sin he took into his body on the cross right so that now his sinlessness his righteousness he gives it to us as a free gift so what i got jesus took what he got he gives it to me right so that now that i have his god nature he has given it to me so that now i who had sin nature is taken into the cross now there is a difference between sin and sins sin is the root sin is because of that root i do the sin example i got a dog i got a pig i give them both bath then i leave them out to play the dog is just lying down there here and there the pig goes for the mug even though i gave him a good bath even though i gave him good love he'll still go into the mug why because that is his what nature nature so man's nature is selfishness but when i receive jesus i realize that my selfish nature has been nailed on the cross and now i have got god's self giving nature or self lessness that gives birth to righteousness right did you get that? yeah so now i have got, got the righteousness of god okay by 
his wounds. What wounds? Because of my sin, there was punishment. And that punishment was at the scourging at the pillar where his flesh was ripped with every lash that he got, that every tissue, every cell of Jesus' body was wounded. If his body is not wounded, then that part of your body cannot get healed. Right. So all our sin is gone into him. All our sicknesses are gone into him. And his body is wounded so that my body can now receive healing. Yeah. And that is why he says, by his wounds, you have been healed. He does not say you will be healed. You have been healed. Now, A is praying, God, please heal me. Hmm. So is he tapping into grace or is no. he tapping into his own understanding? His own understanding. So is he going along with the word or opposite to the word? Opposite to the word. B is being taught and saying, listen, I understand. You can see the symptoms. I understand the doctor's report. I understand everything. But faith is not relying on physical evidence, but faith is relying on Spirit. God's spiritual evidence of the word. So right. are you ready to change your thinking by saying, Lord, every sickness in me is in your body and every good health is in coming to my body. Right. When a person makes that decision, the next moment, the miracle takes place. Because where there is grace and where there is faith, yeah. when they come together, the result is supernatural. So when a person is poor in spirit, he is agreeing to what the word of God is saying, and therefore he experiences the kingdom of heaven. But a person who is saying, I'm humble, and I will pray hard and I will do this and I'll do that. He's saying, Jesus, I'm not relying on your performance. You finished on the cross. I'm relying on my performance, my goodness. And with that, I'm going to get my healing. And God says, disqualify. Right. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Is there anybody here who has got anything to do with bone problem? Slip disc, joint pain or anything? Can I get one hand up? Yeah, you can actually, uh, you know, raise your hand on this on the uh, Zoom, or you can raise your physically. You can raise your hand. Anyone who's got, really? yeah, Manu Francis. There's, there's, there's one Manu Francis Matthew. Yeah. Okay, just unmute him, brother. Yeah. And there's yeah. there's one one more. Uh, okay, I'll take an example of this Manu. Okay. And all the others who have got issues, you can say the same prayer and the same healing takes place. Now, remember, this healing does not take place because how good you are. No, no, no. This healing takes place because how God is good to you. It takes place because God loves you. It takes place because you choose to believe what God said. And that's when you will become poor in spirit. Yeah, Manu, what's your problem, Baba? Uh, I have some knee pain. Uh, yeah, your voice is not heard. Yeah, I, I had a knee pain uh, a few weeks back, not few weeks back, a few months back. Uh, so I just ignored it. And then because I also need to do some exercise, I started walking much. But then one day I was unable to climb the stairs. It was paining severely. I went to see a doctor. And then uh, I did take medicine for around three or four weeks, but then the medicine was actually causing a lot of constipation and problems in the stomach and all that. And I was working in the night shift during those months. So it was a little difficult for me. So basically some other treatments like uh, kind of warm water massage on the knee and all were suggested and some ointment. And then around four or five weeks, I did that and then uh, I actually started being more careful, not climbing stairs and all that. But recently, again, um, uh, I had to, you know, a little bit more exertion because I also need to do exercise. I thought of... Uh, okay, now we are going to use time. grace. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, yes. See, I'm going to speak words, okay? And you're going to repeat the words. But very important, I want you to use imagination. 
What is imagination? Words create images. If I say a dog, you don't say D-O-G. You start imagining a dog. It can be of different varieties, small, big, black, brown, whatever. So when I say a word dog, it starts, you get different images, right? Mm. In the same way, I'm going to use 1 Peter 2.24. We are going to take time and you are going to start using your imagination. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Close your eyes. And those who are there, I'm not talking only about bones, any kind of sickness, we'll see healing sticking place. That is when a person is poor in spirit, he's saying, Lord Jesus, I'm willing to go with you. Whatever your word says, I choose to believe you. That believing is what will create a miracle. Are you ready, brother? Manu? Yes, yes I'm ready. Yeah. I hope everybody is ready. Yeah. You concentrate on you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, close your eyes. And, 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 and brother, we can also imagine our other illnesses also, right? Not just yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever. Other okay. Also, along with this, right? Multiple. See, it, you, it is not more about imagining your illness, imagining your the, your the body of Jesus. Body of Jesus. You, you don't have to think about the sickness at all. It's all about Jesus. Okay. Close your eyes. And say this, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I thank you, I praise you. I thank you, I praise you. All this time I was trying with my self effort. All this time I was trying with my self effort to get my healing. To get my healing. But right now, Lord Jesus, but right now, Lord Jesus, I want to exercise by faith. I want to exercise by faith. I see in the Bible. I see in the Bible. Every time somebody got healed. Every time somebody got healed. You did not tell anybody you healed them. You did not tell anybody you healed him. But you said. But you said. Your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for teaching me. When I operate by faith, when I operate by faith, that comes from your word, that comes from your word, even I can get my miracle. Even I can get my miracle. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. According to 1 Peter 2.24. According to 1 Peter 2.24. The Bible says. The Bible says. You took my place on the cross. You took my place on the cross. And I can see you. And I can see you. With my eyes of faith. With my eyes of faith. You are being scourged at the pillar. You are being scourged at the pillar. Every whip is ripping your flesh out. Every, every whip is ripping your flesh out. There is blood all over. There is blood all over. And with that wounded body. With that wounded body. And with you are that carrying wounded, the cross. You are carrying the cross. And you fell on your knees carrying the cross. And you fell on your knees carrying the cross. I can see your knees ruptured. I can see your knees ruptured. They are completely damaged. They are completely damaged. The Bible says all your bones were out of joint. The Bible says all your bones were out of joint. According to Psalms 22, 14. According to Psalms 22, 14. Lord Jesus, as I see all this. Lord Jesus, I, what Jesus has, I see all this. I now understand. I now understand. You did it all for me. You did it all for me. Your body was wounded. Your body was wounded. So that my body is healed. So that my body is healed. Your bones were out of joint. Your bones were out of joint. So that my bones are aligned. So that my bones are aligned. The joints are lubricated. The joints are lubricated. With your holy blood. With your holy blood. And my bones are completely healed. My bones are completely healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm talking to my joint pains. I am talking to my bone joints. 
I'm talking my bone joints. Be lubricated. Be lubricated. Be aligned. Be aligned. The nerves be loosed. The nerves be loosed. Be relaxed. Be relaxed. Muscles be relaxed. Muscles be relaxed. Tendons and ligaments be aligned. Tendons and ligaments be aligned. And I am completely healed. And I am completely healed. By your promise. By your promise. By my agreement in faith. By my agreement in faith. My knees are completely healed. My knees are completely healed. My whole body is completely healed. My whole body is completely healed. I am pain. I am in pain free. I am pain free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now get up and bend and do all that you want to do. There's no pain in your knees. Come on, get up. Yeah. If there. Bend. Yeah. Do some do some sitting exercise. Get up and sit. That yeah. exercise. Yeah. So I I I basically used to walk a bit, but then I need to. Yeah, I am feeling much better now. I think I should be able to go for a walk tomorrow. Yeah, I'm feeling no, no, a lot no, better no, now. No, no, don't stand. Just bend down. Go down and stand up. Yeah. So that will put pressure on your knees. Yes, yes. Sister Lulita, what do you see? Just unmute her brother. She she was exercising her faith as well. I love that. She got up from her seat and she took a round. Love you, sister. Tell me what happened to you. Brother, yeah. just, just unmute her. Brother, I have a problem with my hip. So when okay. I sit for a long time and then I get up, I have a problem. But so now you are sitting I, for more I than did the hour. healing. I did the healing with full concentration and imagining Jesus being scourged and the flesh coming out and whatever. Full. So then I just got up to see if I could. And I did feel that the pain was much, much less. I could walk. No, no, no. We don't settle for much, much less. Say this. Say this. Close your eyes and say this. Lord Jesus. Say this, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For teaching me, for teaching me to operate by faith, operating my faith to the promise that you have given me, to the promise you have given me, to the promise you have given me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I receive hundred percent creative miracle. I received 100% creating the name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, now walk like a, like a soldier. Come on. Finish. Get up and walk like a soldier. Can I see some marching? No, no, don't sit. Don't sit. Don't sit. Come on. Just, just march. Yeah, march. Lift your legs up and down. Are you amazed? Yes, yes. That's how it works? Yes, yes. Whenever I, before, whenever I got up, I had to limp for the first few steps because the hip was paining very badly. But now I've been sitting for so long and I got up and uh, I didn't have a pain. Praise so the Lord. What, when you become poor in spirit, yours is the kingdom of God. <laughs> Amen. Poor in spirit is to agree with God's word. And that is the first beatitude. From there begins all the other beatitudes. So when you agree with God's word, that attitude of agreeing with God's word is a person who is poor in spirit. So no matter how much you know about the Bible, you are still saying, God, I am not self-sufficient. I am God sufficient. I am not right. self-dependent. I am God-dependent. Now, do you know when Brother Jose will lift his hand up, that means, please stop. Your grace period is over. I gave you extra time. Your grace period also has got over now. 
yes thank you thank you brother johnson it was wonderful uh, time that we all had so uh, it is what what we wanted to make thank offer you. yeah what we wanted the offer that we wanted to make to all of you uh, I, I, i'll make i'll make one prayer for all yes. my precious sisters yes that tonight before they go to sleep yeah okay mm-hmm. as they are lying down on their bed they will encounter the move of the holy spirit on their bed yeah. they will have supernatural sleep okay and in that sleep god is going to perform amazing things in their life and yeah and brother johnson i'm i'm manu here so some of yeah. the pain from some other parts of my body are gone completely <laughs> yes <laughs> and this is also much better like me i'm okay like it will get better i just need to start walking but then i have some of the pains in other parts of the body that's completely so, gone i don't so know so now that he has got multiple yeah. healings brother make the bill double triple huh? not one bill <laughs> yeah yeah so i i and present... send, send two bills one to sister also <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> right so uh, you are to make... yeah father i thank you lord you make the gospel so easy for us to understand and so easy it is lord to get a healing and a miracles by grace through faith father thank you that this seed that has been planted let the seed destroy every wrong teaching and doctrine of self effort because we do not live under the law but we are living under grace and truth Lord Jesus it is you who said to the Samaritan woman that the father in heaven is looking for seeking for true worshipers who worship God in spirit and in truth not in their soulish mind not with their senses but with their spirit with their heart and with truth your word is the truth you said when my word abides in you you are truly my disciple and as you continue in my word you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free father we thank you for this great opportunity that you have given and it is your doing o oh lord that you have started this bible class and i know and i know and i know without a doubt lord that every one who is a participant here you have got a great great purpose and an assignment and in every one of us and it is you who is teaching us the truths and through the truth so lord every person's life is changed from inside out father in the name of jesus whatever stronghold is there in the mind of all of them it is destroyed right now in the name of jesus they are all healed according to the word and tonight as they go to sleep o oh lord before they sleep they will take their rosary and they will say lord jesus you have made me righteous and by your wounds i am completely healed lord jesus it is you who has made me righteous and by your wounds i am completely healed lord jesus it is you who has made me righteous and by your wounds i am completely healed father as they speak your word you have promised us that you are the god who is watching over your word you want to perform your word quickly and your word is active your word is uh, alive your word is full of power your word is energetic effective and very important your word operates operates every organ of the body even the mind even relationship operates every area of our life and i thank you that tonight is a night of a great miracle as everyone does this homework believing when we meet next sunday i believe so i believe so we meet next sunday again a lot before we meet next sunday there will be so many things that is happening every day in their life in jesus name i pray amen amen Amen. Thank you, Brother Johnson. I wanted to share one small, a small, you know, uh, experience before we close the session. On February fourth, we invited Brother Johnson to Happy Families, the ministry that we, which I'm part of it. 
we invited him for one session so we used to have once in a month you know where we invite speakers and they come and preach so brother johnson was invited to preach in that session and after the session he made an offer he said if you want it if you are willing i am willing to dedicate one hour every day for a bible study so we we i got back with my friends and we said okay let us give him an opportunity to share the word for 40 days because it was during the lenten season that 40 days became 6 months every day from 5:30 to 7 o'clock we have the bible study my dear brothers and sisters that has transformed hundreds of families lives have changed not the miracle the insight there has been mighty peace and joy in the families families are transformed people who didn't uh, who are in deep uh, sickness deep uh, other problems were delivered because we all learned the power of the word of god in day to day life so we wanted to make this offer to you sister piedada and to your congregation sister we wanted to of commit our time to come and share with you the power of the word of god how you can live a victorious christian life in your day to day life, in your day to day living and also to those uh, members of uh, your uh, lay community we also wanted to invite you all to be a part of the bible study which is at 5:30 to 7 o'clock you will experience the mighty power of the word of god so please get back to us sister sister sindina is in touch with me you can you know let us know what is your decision but we are we believe that this is going to be a beginning of a new life in each one of our lives thank you very much sister sister peter i wanted to say something you have to unmute i think i have to you have to say something sister yeah let us say no brother yeah you you are on you mute sister you know what you know what she's going to say uh, we'll be there by next sunday you watch yeah sister <laughs> you, you can hear your sister we can hear you i think i think your uh, mic is is on mute i think no, you are you are not on mute but we cannot hear you can you can you remove your uh, headphones and speak can you remove your headphones from the more sessions from you not yeah, only yeah. this one <laughs> Yes. So can we keep it uh, this time, sister, every Sunday at 8.30? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, sister. So I told please... you, I told you, brother, the spirit of God has worked a miracle. Yeah. So, I told you. Yeah. So we will keep it for one hour, 8.30 to 9.30. Uh, mm -hmm. It will not be too late. So we will also have, uh, you know, uh, sessions like this. We will get deeper into the word. So we would uh, send you the invite uh, to all of you. And uh, then we will uh, start the journey. Thank you very much, sister. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. A anything else? Uh, sister Sinjina, you wanted to say something? Sister Sinjina? Nothing, I brother. Okay. I know only sister Sinjina and sister Pierre Dada. The rest of the sisters, uh, yeah, uh, you know, we would like, we love to have uh, more and more sisters because uh, that uh, gives us the power power in the sense that we are with the church right when we move with the church there is a huge difference you know in rather than just uh, we being alone so it is a, such a joy to have you sisters always in our bible study and uh, we as we i keep all, we keep always uh, telling uh, the group at the beginning of our bible study that we are not theologians okay we are not learned theologians we are simple people who believe in the word of god and which who, who has experienced the power of the word in our lives. We wanted to just share that with you and we wanted to learn from you, sisters, and all these learned uh, people how to you know, correct ourselves and empower the church so that the church, the sleeping giant, become awake and we will see the return of the Lord quicker. Thank you, sister. Thank you very much. God bless you all. It is, it is wonderful to have all of you. See you all. God bless you. Thank you, brother. Bye-bye. Yeah, good night. Bye, brother Johnson.